So the next competitor and the final competitor of the men's Olympic side of the boxing team is a certain Anthony Joshua in the super heavyweight category plus 91 kilos. Now, as we know from Joshua's story, he was a late starter to the sport, only beginning boxing in 2007 at the age of 18 when his cousin suggested he take it up. Now, Joshua won the 2009 and 2010 Haringey Box Cup and the Senior ABA Championships in 2010 in only his 18th bout. And he later turned down a £50,000 offer to turn professional at this point. And he said, turning down £50,000 was easy. I didn't take up the sport for money. I want to win medals. He also went on to win the same tournament the following year. And in 2010, he became the British Amateur Champion at the GB Championships. And in October 2011, he was named Amateur Boxer of the Year by the Boxing Writers Club of Great Britain. During the 2011 World Championships in Baku, Joshua marked his sudden arrival on the world team when he won a silver medal. En route to the final, Joshua secured his place at the 2012 Olympic Games in the Super Heavyweight Division as a relative newcomer to the elite level of the sport. Yeah, and, uh, well, going into what Joshua did, I mean, I'm sure we all know, Joshua went into the 2012 London Olympics, as, as you mentioned, as a novice, a novice of the international scene, and despite being a silver uh, silver medalist, uh, world silver medalist in the World Championships, but he received a tough draw as well in the last 16 of the super heavyweight events in Cuban Irislanda Savon, who was actually ranked number four in the world by eBay. And he battled through and was given the result 17 16, a very close win for him. This decision actually caused some controversy with some observers believing Savon had clearly won the bout, whilst, whilst a few others taking the view that he had won it on merit. Um, and in his next bout, he fought two fighters, mate. Beijing Olympic silver medalist Zhang uh, Z- Z- Zilini. I always get his name wrong, but he's a massive guy, isn't he? Uh, dropping his tool on opponent in the middle round, Joshua won 15 11. In the semi final, Joshua met Kazakh boxer Ivan Ditchko uh, and won 13 11 to gain a place in the Olympic final. Uh, that was again the same night, the same bolt was on the relays, and uh, I was one of the two votes for Joshua met the 32 year old reigning Olympic champion and former two time world champion Roberto Camali of Italy. Now, after conceding the first two rounds, 6-5 and in 13-10, Joshua grew into the fight and fought back to level the scores after the third round, 18-18. Joshua was announced the winner via a countback and the new Olympic world champion. The final decision was criticised by some boxing experts. Still today, people mention it being defined as a home decision and he was appointed an MBE in the 2013 New Year Honours for service to boxing as well. So, yeah, a couple of contentious results there for Anthony and one that people still sort of like to pull on even today. I slept all night. I've done all my packing, spent time with the other athletes on my team and we just spent it on a high. You've got something rather impressive around your neck. Yeah. How does that feel? It was heavy. It was very heavy as you... You can feel it as uh, well. You tell no lie, that is quite weighty. It is, and uh, it just uh, represents a lot of struggle, a lot of hard work, um, a lot of experience. That's what I think this means to me. And uh, even I say the weight's off my shoulder, this just reminds me how much pressure was on it. The weight's off your shoulder around your neck. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, yeah. And when you heard the words, Anthony Joshua, Olympic champion, how was that? It feels, it feels like, like it, it doesn't feel real. You know, because I focus more on one fight at a time. And I'm trying to tell myself, it's not the finals, it's just another fight, it's just another fight. And uh, I, I won another fight in my mind, but what came with it was becoming the 2012 Olympic champion, which was great. What message have you got for young Londoners about how sport has changed your life and, and what it can do for your, your vision, your ambition, your horizons? Um, you know, when you're young, you've got so much energy, not much to do. Um, so sometimes you can find yourself doing stuff that you're not supposed to do but you don't realise it because you're just burning up energy. It doesn't always have to be sport, you know, but try to be productive, do good things, whatever it's charity work. I know it doesn't sound cool, you know what I mean, but um, in the long run when you get a bit older and stuff and you start realising about your future, you'll understand. And uh, I just hope that the elder generation as well can guide the youth because sometimes the youth don't have anyone to, uh, to look up to.
Yeah, the, the the two decisions in that particular Olympic Games was obviously the Savon decision. People felt that he'd lost that decision. People still do allude to that. Uh, even today, even in 2020, of what he's achieved, which we'll touch on in a minute. And then even in the, the final against Roberto Camar- Camarelli, even then people felt like he'd lost that particular one. And he was very lucky to get it only because it was in London, which I can understand why people would think it's a, a hometown decision. I mean, looking back on it in hindsight, I think it's quite possible that on any other night he might have lost that. But obviously it was it was written in the stars for Anthony Joshua. And of course... If you've been living under a rock for the last <laughs> six, seven years, then you probably don't even know what we're talking about. Of course you do. It's Anthony <laughs> Joshua, for God's sake. 2013, he confirmed that he was going to turn professional under the Matchroom Sport promotional banner, and he went on to hold the British and Commonwealth heavyweight titles from 2014 to 2016. And as we know now, he's a two-time unified heavyweight champion, having held the WBA Super, IBF, WBO and IBO titles since... December 2019 and previously between 2016 and 2019. Of course, we know how his career has gone today. Epic fights with Klitschko. He's had Povetkins, the the shock loss in 2019 to Andy Ruiz and then to come back and win the title in Saudi Arabia. It's been a great tale and we're all looking forward to see what happens next in the story of Anthony Joshua. Will he fight the other champion of the heavyweight division, which is a certain Tyson Fury, a fight that we're all really wanting in Britain for obvious reasons, of course. 